Americans say happens you know what I mean but in Nigeria we say things they happen and somehow that seems to carry a whole lot of weight in a country where pidgin English and proper English are spoken side by side and that was what Dan Hoyle soon realized when he came to Nigeria as a Fulbright scholar he went to the Niger Delta region he lived amongst the people and understood their problems. He went back to the United States and portrayed these problems in his mind-blowing play, Things They Happen. You're watching Messengers and we'll be right back. Dan Hall is a San Francisco native that has created two one-man acts to date. Second Navigator and Florida 2004. <laughs> At the time we met Dan, he had just created this amazing piece called Things They Happen, which was a result of his one year stay in the city of Port Harcourt in southeastern Nigeria. On a Fulbright scholarship geared towards exploring the lifelong works of the late J. William Fulbright, which centered around education and peaceful dialogue, Dan created a display and a forum that gives the audience an opportunity to discuss the challenges of the region, ranging from human rights, environmental, oil wealth derivation, to gender and educational issues. At the New York City event hosted by Africa Related and geared towards exploring Dan's creativity and imagination, the mostly African audience also experienced material so powerful that it raised an awareness about the Niger Delta region without passing judgment on the actions of anyone. We talked to Dan after this break. He puts down that newspaper and goes to one of the places inside the newspaper, a place called Africa. Ah. Okay, you might have seen it before, eh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Probably in the fifth grade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is still there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So then he goes to West Africa here. Okay, that's a part that white people don't normally go. <laughs> you know, there's so much love East Africa, South Africa, there are so many animals, plenty of whites. <laughs> no. In Nigeria, we kill off all the animals in the <laughs> 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 Malaria is a wonderful taste. <laughs> so then he goes to Nigeria here, yeah. the giant of Africa, 140 million people. But he goes to a large Pacific place, eh? Niger Delta. Without just here, as you see, when the Niger River was just finishing up, it becomes all bush and creeks and swamps. You know, it's a bit like your Mississippi Delta. <laughs> <laughs> but more guns. <laughs> <laughs> so now they arrived in Port Harcourt. That's the main oil city. Because the main thing about Niger Delta is the oil. 10% of your oil is coming from there. But then there are two main villages Dan goes to, you'll be seeing in the show. The first village is called Nembe Creek. Okay, Nembe Creek is an Ijo village. And the Ijo people, you know, they so much love to fish. Well, sometimes they are poor, they do fight, they never. And currently, that never is a very large shell oil flow station. <laughs> so they want to blow it off. Okay. Okay, and then the other village Dan goes to, you'll be seeing in the show, is called Escravos. That means slaves in Portuguese. <laughs> Shadowy. <laughs> <laughs> so that's very different from Nembe Creek. That's an Ishakiri village. And the Ishakiri people, they so much love business, they so much love foreigners. And currently, their neighbor is a very large Chevron flow station. <laughs> okay, what is a flow station, you might ask? A flow station is where all of the oils are collected before they come to America. <laughs> It's like the LS Island of oil production. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Because you know the thing about Nigeria, 250 tribes, they're all fighting for power, and the people of Niger Delta, they're so neglected. You know, they have no schooling, no roads, no light. They are a bit like your Appalachians people. <laughs> no, but their teeth are okay. <laughs> 
It is a well-known fact that one out of every four black persons is a Nigerian. With a population of over 140 million people and an ethnic group that ranges from over 250,000 dialects, the country sits on square miles of vegetation and desert land that is two and a half times the size of California. The major ethnic groups are Yoruba, Hausa, and Igbo. There are 36 states in the country with Abuja as a federal capital territory. The story of Nigeria is a selfless history of leadership in Africa in many areas such as sports, peacekeeping, education, arts, and diplomacy. Nigeria sits on the shores of the Gulf of Guinea. It is surrounded by the Republic of Beni on its western side, Niger to the north, Chad to the northeast, and Cameroon to the east and southeast. Nigeria gained its independence from Britain in 1960, and it is the most populated country in Africa. And I want for you, you don't come back. I didn't think you were going to come back. Yeah, I just want you to see my son. Can we go there? You are leaving. Have a seat. Okay, my plan that it didn't work. I just thought if I sell my guns for money for university, it can still be used for destruction. So I just threw them in the creek. Then I have no money, so I have to be a fighter again. <laughs> Look at this village. No judge, chief doesn't stay here, only me, the CRO, Community Relations Officer. <laughs> Oil companies hire me to make peace. But, but, but I am judge, I am chief, I must handle the youth, and if I mishandle the youth, they become militants, and everybody blames me. Please cool down. Please cool down, excuse me. Please cool down and go to one cool corner. Now. Please and please, please. You see this man? Wife bitter. Beaten and beaten his wife. For an educated man. Like me. Like you. I still recall walking into that theater in Soho in New York City to go and watch this play. A friend had told me about things they happen. And I'm not quite expecting anything or knowing what you know I'll take out of it, but I went nonetheless. But it was a fantastic, fantastic play. But what I soon realized was I looked around me, there were hardly, in fact, there were no Nigerians in the room. There were no Africans on that night anyway. So we went back, joined forces together, and along with the Culture Project and Dan Hoyle, we got this fantastic panel to sit down with us and discuss this issue of the Niger Delta. At a special performance of Things That Happen in New York City and hosted by Africa Related, tagged an evening of arts and conversation, Dan solo act, written and performed through the mastery of the art of miming, left the audience with a feeling of being in a comedy club, but also addressing the issues that surround the region where 75% of Nigeria's export earnings is derived in oil. Things that happen brings to light different views and perspectives of all players that are today involved in the challenges being faced in the region of the Niger Delta. 
from the oil companies to the militants, the government. It explores all the issues from colonialism to gender, injustice and human rights to lending aid. How shall we kick up the discussion? This One of the highlights of the evening was an interactive panel, an audience conversation with Dan Hoyle. The panel was made up of Lisa Vives of Global Information Network, Jerry Itimi, president of the Coalition of the Niger Deltans in the Diaspora, Oke Ndibe, columnist and author of Arrow of Rain, Oye Ronke Oyeumi, a sociology professor of Stony Brook University in New York, Mr. Shaka Nguenya, radio host and creator of SARFM New York. We, we talk about incremental improvements. The issues we addressed were eye-openers for most Nigerians right. living in the diaspora, this, this, and it promises to spur the conversation and actions into the future. The problem with the Niger Delta is it's a very complex one. Um, one is the, uh, the, the depth of, of poverty uh, in, in the Niger Delta and the, 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 the depth of ecological damage is so deep and so profound that, um, in a sense, the, the question we should be asking is not whether violence is, is, is important, but whether, in a sense, violent, violence has not become um, almost a natural organic response to the kind of problem that you have in, in the Delta. Okay. The problems in the Niger Delta, from state to state, they are different. Like in my state, Delta State, when this problem started, it was like inter-ethnic clashes be, be, between the Ijaws, the Yorubos, the Shekiris. You go to River State, it is about courtism. But right now, Port Harcourt, because this administration has taken the issue of the Niger Delta very, very seriously to heart. Port Harcourt, the Joint Military Task Force, is in Port Harcourt today. And uh, the oil companies and uh, the citizens, they are going about. Because what we must understand, not everyone who says a militant is a militant. Some of these are armed robbers. Yes. Some of them are oil, uh, they involved in oil bunkering. So they are hiding under that toga of militancy to go and cause criminal activity all over the Niger Delta. At the risk of talking as a Nigerian from another part of Nigeria, I actually think that the Niger Delta situation is extreme but not exceptional. Extreme but not exceptional. What is extreme about it is that the Niger Delta has this visible uh, resource of oil. But the whole point of it, and I think Dan's play does touch upon it, is that the Nigerian government, and indeed <coughs> a whole lot of governments around the continent, are not responsive to the electorate. There have been a lot of significant progress, especially with the coming in of our new president, President Yaradua. Because he made Niger Delta issue as one of the focal points of the seven point agenda for the Nigerian nation. So, what we call upon the global community to partner because there's a relative peace now in the Niger Delta. Nigeria is a sovereign country. We have a government. Why is it that it is NGOs? And Angelina Jolie! <laughs> Not to talk of my sister, Oprah, and I say that through clenched teeth, <laughs> who have to come and put in the basic resources. I think that's the fundamental question. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to be a citizen? What do, does it mean to talk about governance in Nigeria when the government cannot respond to the electorate? The way forward is a non-violent approach. We have to appeal to the youths. Anyone who involves any criminal activities, hostage taking in the name of militancy, if the law enforcement agencies today get you in Nigeria, you'll be taken to court and you'll be prosecuted. Where are the communities and how do we, we reach them? When I came to the first show, I noticed that also it, it was white, you know, and and 
why is it not, was the message not reaching? And I think because in part, you know, we, we're having to discover these new channels. We have to use SAR FM, we have to use Amsterdam News, it has to be in Caribbean life. And we have to, you know, as um, concerned media consumers, we have to learn where to find the news that's important to us. There was only one man, the African man. <laughs> but you people, you run away to Europe. What? Some hundreds of years later, you come again. <laughs> and this time you say, <laughs> you say, we are going to make a Europe in Africa. <laughs> But you are still thinking like white man. So impatient. So you make a half Europe in Africa. Mango. So now you white man, you come again. <laughs> as, a, as a researcher, <laughs> as a charity, <laughs> as NGO. <laughs> Why? You are still thinking like white man. This is your oil politics, no. This is our African politics. You see, you come with your words to the democracy, human rights, development, <laughs> You have to think like black man. See? What is really happening? Maybe you are scared to see, but you must try. Try to think like black man, eh? like African man. Eh? Just become African man again. Eh? <laughs> yes, don't try. <laughs> no, you're not trying, just try. No, I'm telling you to try. <laughs> yes, get up and try now. Go up and try. Try now. You are trying. You are trying. What is it? Try harder. Thousands and thousands of people have stood before me and told me that this program changes their lives. He doesn't have to do that. I can see it, so did we all. And uh, he has uh, displayed it so brilliantly tonight. I am, I am really, really thrilled to have been here. I have something for you. And this is an hour-long documentary that I finished last year on the ideas and life of my husband. Thank and, you. Uh, <laughs> I hope you very much enjoy. Seriously, you've got a tremendous mm -hmm. opportunity. You, you're an ambassador right now. Dan is a wonderful ambassador for Americans. Mm -hmm. And they do need Dan mm -hmm. to tell them that they can wake up one morning and save Africa. Don, I congratulate you. Especially the way you have even woven ad libbed um, those funny statements, you know, <laughs> keeping people all up, all through, in, in a, a supposedly serious issue that you're presenting to, to the public. It's a great job. Congratulations. I'll have the opportunity to go to Nigeria and perform there not only in Lagos and Abuja in, in, a, in a sort of a public setting, but also do a, a command performance for His Excellency Yardua. So. While drama may be interesting and funny and even thought-provoking, at Messengers, we see the art form of drama as one that is effective in sending a message of hope to places that are war-torn, to governments on issues 
that adversely affect the people in areas like the Niger Delta. Dan Hoyle may be a foreigner in Nigeria, but I can tell you one thing, he is one in purpose with the people of the land whose problems he's brought up so well in this masterpiece called Things They Happen. And that is the end of our show today, sadly, but thank you so much for being with us. And until next time, when we bring you another fantastic artist doing great work and making waves across the Atlantic, I'm your host, Oiza. And as they say in Biniland, Okindovi. See you next time.